But like this part of the deck I really liked, like this low to the ground part. So I was trying to figure out how to make the deck mono white, and then I was looking at Fiddlebender, and I'm like, this card's really interesting, kind of I like hard to build around, but uh, I, I had it kind of sitting in my drafts for a couple weeks before I returned to the idea, and then um, I've been liking it a lot since then. I do, I do like this hand that we've had this a few times of the Sentinel into Thorn. Um, I'm gonna put back the Ikor Wellspring and. I'm gonna hold the bobble because there's a chance I'm gonna go Smith plus um, Smith plus bobble on two, and if I draw a land next turn, I'll I'll probably go uh, Smith plus pay a mana bobble on three. Okay, drawing the treasure vault. I'm just gonna play this now. Where did foothills go? Can be a few different decks, of course. Breeding pool. Hopefully, Bobble gives us a little bit of insight. <laughs> yep, uh, I, I think we're playing against Rhinos. Well, instead of the Thought Monitors, including Thopter Sword to go with Urza. I mean, that's the, that's that's the problem with Thopter Sword, right? Is that it's it's obviously you win the game when you have Urza and Thopter Sword, but the the two card combo of Thopter Sword is is not that strong. I guess I'll uh, use the bobble to trigger the smith next tur this turn and then vault to trigger next turn. It's like, yeah, just like Thopter Sword is like very raceable. It just, do does just doesn't do that much. Um, I mean, it's not bad in some matchups, but it's not good enough in a lot of them, unfortunately. Um, so the, yeah, that, that's my issue with it. Am I planning on trying out Resurgent Belief again? Maybe. Maybe. I don't, you know... I never plan to just, like, completely shelf a deck. There's always a chance I return to something. Fury, Pitch, Fire, Ice. They still have Crash... Wait, why did... Oh, they suspended the Footfalls. I missed that. I think I want to cast the portable hole so that I have a one drop to sack. I guess I'm probably not getting... I mean, even if I get Nettlesys next turn, having the artifact in play is really nice. Yeah, I don't know if I want to play Resurgent Belief anytime soon. It feels like there's like way too much graveyard hate. Yeah, Thorn does make them pay one for the Cascade, but it, it also, like, unfortunately is pretty good against Violent Outburst, not that good against Shardless Agent. Okay, big top deck. Alright, shout out to Gigantha for being relevant. <laughs> shout out to Gigantha. I mean, the 5-5 five five is also, like, is super relevant against the Rhinos, too. They don't have Violent Outburst, which is good for us. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to play this. Uh, hope it doesn't get Petty Thefted. Jog, thank you for Twitch Prime, appreciate you. Taking three down to nine. I guess we're just dead. Block here, take seven. Plus three. Good. Yeah, we, we die even if we play this. Just to the borrower. Don't know that we have outs either. That's also lethal. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Win this game. Uh, we do have some sideboard cards, of course. We've got the Void Mirror, the Torpor Orb. Or, sorry, not Torpor Orb. I will bring in the Spell Sky. Uh, the where's the Ratchet Bomb? There it is. Ratchet Bomb are the main ones. And the problem with the problem with uh, Canonist is, of course, that um, it does not stop Charles Agent, but it might still be worth bringing in. I guess the Sword of Feast and Famine is kind of nice because their Rhinos are green. 
Uh, I think the Crucible is probably a little slow here. Probably worth bringing in. Why Ratchet over EE? Uh, you can't Oswald for EE. Well, I probably should have cut the Relic. Seems a little slow. I'm gonna mulligan. He, like, really needs to draw lands. Okay, this hand's great. I'll just put back the Canonist. Krug, thank you for the Twitch, or the eight months. Put my channel points against 4-1 or better. Please take them for me. I'll do my very best. Oh, I, sorry, I tapped wrong here. Missed a point of damage. Might be another Giganta game. See what they do. Yeah, Fury, I mean, Fury's still a two for two. It's, it's pretty bad for us though. That's twice I've missed a point. I mean, yeah, who's counting? Force Pitch Borrower, it's fine. I really want them to Rhinos this turn, so I'm not gonna Ratchet Bomb here. Yeah, they got Charlotte's Agent, it's great for us here. Okay, less well, good if they Fury first. Pitching Violent Outburst. Bummer. And they pitch the Violent Outburst, so they like they either just don't have another red card, or they just don't have... Uh, or they have uh, more... <laughs> they have more uh, Cascaders. And I really can't beat more Cascaders. Boom Bust on top. And it's boom bust, two mystery cards. Well, uh, Violent Upburst is close to an unbeatable last card, probably. We bricked? Oh no. Oh man. This was not a, a smith we could afford to brick on. Please don't shock in Steam Vents. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hopefully we're both just kind of top decking. <laughs> okay, Force of Vigor is not particularly good for us, I'll say. I mean, they'll kill my drama in my vault. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, just really could not afford to brick on the smith. What's the number of hits we have again? I think it's the first time we bricked all day. We have seven artifact lands, 11, 18, 24, 26, 30, 30 hits. Yeah, so I definitely grabbed Cauldra knowing that they have the Force of Vigor and then to put our companion into the hand. 67% chance of hitting. Is it really that low? It's only like 70% chance? Because if that's the case, then we'd be just getting really lucky all day. Oh no, we have 33. Sorry, 33. Miscounted. We won! Let's go! Oh my gosh. I can't believe we won that game where they forced my Void Mirror, furied my two Sentinels, uh, and then and then they uh, force vigored my mana there, right? And they dead gone my first Smith, and we bricked on them one of the Smiths. That's crazy. <sighs> Alright, let's go to game three. 95 chance of hitting, yeah. It's okay, it'll happen sometimes, right? We're I think we were actually like just due for a miss the amount of times we've hit today. 
I'm gonna keep this. Torpor might be good enough. Uh, I don't think it does anything in this matchup, and it does it stops some of our ETB creatures. Oh, it stops Fury, right? But it's, I mean, we have we have enough ETB creatures. I I don't think it's good. Yeah, I mean, Ice into Cascade on the play is always just like it's just always so good. Not much we can do here, unfortunately, except having drawn better, I guess. I mean, we can maybe we can try to fiddle bend into a ratchet bomb. Oh, then they missed their land. Okay, so let's go Sacred Foundry. Uh, Shellstone League for the Twitch Prime. Yeah, let's just cast uh, Greaves here, I think. I mean, the Thorn could be fine too, but like getting the Greaves in play so I can just immediately, if they cascade, fiddle bend into Ratchet Bomb, sacking the star seems pretty good. But I might go Smith into Thorn this turn. Oh, Smith in the Spell Sky seems better. And we'll have to remember not to put the Greaves on the Spell Sky, because it's actually <laughs> it's actually not that good on the Spell Sky. Because then you can't redirect, right? Throwing him in this land seems nutty. Yeah, I may be undervaluating it a little bit, but I feel like I, I'm valuing the Oswald pretty highly. They force a vigor both of my treasure vaults. Okay, that's kind of a problem. <laughs> they get a Rhinos down. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is obviously like the weakness of playing this card. But it's not like if you take, <laughs> if you take Treasure Vault out of the deck, <laughs> Uh, if you take Treasure Vault out of the deck, Force of Vigor is still one of the best cards in the format against you. Kind of hard to get around that, right? Alright, gonna cast a Fiddlebender, I guess. Try to dodge a burn spell. But I do have a second one. I guess that's not super relevant now. Need to draw a land, probably. They've been stuck on two for a while. Taking eight down to 11. Yeah, sometimes you just lose to Force of Vigor, I guess. They found the land. They found the land. I, mean, I don't really think we have much of a choice here. Problem is, we're just, I guess we're just dead to Violent Outburst, which they probably have. But maybe they'll just cast Borrower here, right? Yeah, I mean, that's best case scenario for us, but still kind of like out of the frying pan. Still in the fire. Have to jump block with the Smith, I think. And then we take, oh. Yeah, that's game. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Close game. If I mean the force vigor is just so tough there. Well, we were taking nine. We chump block with Oswald, but we we how do, how do we win from that position? We're chump blocking with Oswald. We can get we can spend our next turn Oswald for Ratchet Bob, and then we die to Borrower. We're just I I I I'm like pretty confident we were dead there, right? Yeah, also on the last fiddle been there. Point of moles to five. Rhinos is so strong. Yeah, I think I think Amos is a totally fine deck right now. In fact, I kind of feel like it's been it's been a totally fine deck that has been I think uh, exaggerated how poorly a, a position it's had in the metagame. 
I think people, I, I think the amulet players who are like, ah, amulet's totally unplayable, are, are, have been a little bit, you know, hyperbolic. What are Rhino's really bad matchups? Uh, the blue white control deck is probably the most favorite against like st traditional Rhinos, I'd say. Hmm. So it can go Oswald equip, and then if they want to sack the Butcher to kill the Oswald, we'll probably just have to be okay with that exchange. Do you think this could become a tier deck? Um, I don't know. I think this deck's really good. I think this deck's really good. I think it's really powerful. But for a deck to become a tier deck, it also has to be popular. You know what I mean? And it's just kind of up to like the player base if they want to play the deck. But I, I've been I've been I've been really liking it. Yeah, I'll probably play it in, in uh, the challenge on Saturday, uh, to be honest. Just to see how it fares in that metagame. Because I also feel like a lot of the matches we've been losing against have been like elves, humans, a lot of, uh, a lot of like kind of non-meta decks, which is, I think, a good sign for this list. Taking a big hit from the Carrion Feeder. I can also sack this portable hole into a two drop without them getting the card back. Not sure which two drop though, because you don't have the main deck spell skite or anything. Tap land. I can just get Ikor Wellspring, I guess. Can maybe just play Ingenious Smith this turn too, jump block. Play Cave Tapped. Chromatic Star is good with Oswald, of course. Um, I think I'm jump blocking with the Smith. I can take the Treasure Vault and then I can go next turn. Uh, I can play I can play Crucible and I can Oswald uh, the Treasure Vault into a portable hole for the Carrion Feeder, which is probably good. We already have a one mana artifact in play that's good to sacrifice. And then I'll leave this back to block another Dreadhorde Butcher. What's the plan for Spelter? You have main deck Pithing Needle, uh, but the you have Pithing Needle, Thorn of Thorn of Amethyst, Frexian Revoker, Aether Sworn Canonist are all good cards against Belcher. And you can you know you have a lot of ways to tutor. You can tutor the Needle with Belch with the the Saga, which is maybe too slow, but you gotta you know just find one of those disruptive elements. Is the plan? All right, I'm gonna block here. Take two down to eight. When that sequence have worked with Citadel in the yard? No, the problem is with it doesn't work with Citadel in the yard because we can't go Cruise of Worlds, play Citadel, activate Oswald because Oswald uses a, a white mana to sacrifice. But it would work if they would finally give me Ancient Den. They would finally give me Ancient Den. They're going to tragic slip their own carrion feeder for no discernible reason. And then they sack the feeder to itself. So I don't really get that one. Okay, but Crucible of Worlds gives me a supply of... Of uh, portable holes. Oh, that was Undying Evil. I see, I see. There, it was Undying Evil, and they, the Carrion Feeder already had a counter. I, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, not a combo there. Yeah, Artifact Lands are unbanned, but you can only play them with Oswald Fiddlebender. Yeah, I think I'll just Portable Hole here. 
And then play Stoneforge Mystic. How did I feel yesterday compared to Oswald? It's just honestly apples to oranges, right? Not really a good card to compare, I think. So it's Needle Goblin Bombardment. Then hold up uh, Stoneforge activation. What's my process when I brew? Uh, I actually wrote like an entire article on Channel Fireball about why I process on brewing. But the, the general, how it usually goes is I'll have an idea that I think is good of a card that is underplayed or an interaction that's interesting. Just something that I think is underexplored and has a chance to be competitive and modern and then I then and then it always starts from there I'll start to build decks around the idea I'll flesh out the deck list and then sometimes I'll like it sometimes I won't like it um, but that's always how it starts yeah uh, the cal the cauldron doesn't exile the batter skull so I think it's better to do this How do you formulate your thoughts? I mean, it, it comes from doing nothing but thinking about magic decks for, uh, like, years. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not like a... It's not easy. Like, I spend my entire life thinking about decks and card interactions, and I formulate my thoughts, like, kind of based on my experience in the format, what I, like, know to work or know not to work. That's how I form my evaluations. It just takes a lot of time and a lot of experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually I start with four Luris, four Mistress Bobble, and then work from there. Sometimes they end up getting cut. <laughs> Inca Surge to Cavern. Cavern doesn't cast Portable Hole, and you're already playing a lot of uh a lot of colorless lands, so I don't think you can't afford it. It would be it would be cool if this card, you know, like just also could be cast off cavern i'd be down uh, i haven't tried this deck with emery honestly like i think like the biggest incentive to be fiddlebender is to be mono white and not have to play the tapped blue white artifact land and your mana is really good and, and not painful i feel like this is the big incentive to this deck so i'm like not that interested in um a card like that I do like Needle from Bombardment. Probably cut the Cauldra here. Yeah, like Emery's like a fine card, but it's, it's you know, makes you splash of color, and then all of a sudden you're playing Thought Monitors too. You're playing Metallic Rebukes, and like I I did play I I didn't like Emery in the blue the blue white version, which was like the initial inspiration for this deck was the blue white version i was working on and I, I i liked this deck i thought this deck was strong and i still do think it's strong this deck has higher upside than the mono white version but like i feel like most of the games i lost with this deck i just like drew two thought monitors early or an urza and a thought monitor early and my deck was just was just clunky and slow to get out of the gate uh but when the mono white deck your your curve is so low and you still have a lot of really powerful card advantage engines without like the risk of of having a draw that just doesn't function or or the risk is diminished a lot thoughts of modern inverter there's a lot of different ways to build it none of them are seem to be particularly great but there's it's underexplored for sure does chalice hurt the deck yeah we got a lot of one drops watch your modern challenge youtube ramulus was insane yeah i've been really proud of that list for sure have we re reviewed Innistrad spoilers? We've been looking at some of them. Uh, I haven't seen like almost anything I think could see playing a modern deck. Maybe like the two mana spirit, but probably not. Let's see, I, I do want to kind of keep an eye on these though. The sword is not that bad, but it's not good enough probably. Uh, I would keep this 
if I feel like the cage is like that impactful, but I'm not sure exactly how impactful it is here. Let's keep this, and then I think with the cage in hand, I'll just put back the relic. Oh, there was this card I, I couldn't read because on the on the on the on the preview on the spoiler video, they, they just threw this up and it was gone in 20 seconds. So there's so many words here. Whenever it or another non-token creature you control dries, make a blood token, and you create five. Okay, create a blood token if you control five or more. Transform beginning of combat to one target blood token becomes a two-two bat. That card's not too bad. That card's not too bad. Could maybe see that one getting there. A Voldarian Estate is also like, like it, it, it like is probably good in a modern vampires list, but it's also like, it's not so good that by itself that you can play a, mo a vampire deck in modern. You'll need more support. But that two one's okay. The two this this one's okay. Voldarian Bloodcaster. It, it it would have to be something that kind of incidentally gets gets there instead of being so strong you can build your deck around it. I also kind of like this card, Dominating Vampire. <laughs> Got the relic back. Excited for Thalia and Standard. Yeah, that would be cool, like, for sure. I remember, like, when I first got into Standard, I was playing Return to Ravnica in a Strat Standard, and Thal Thalia was uh, in the format, and I thought it was a really good card to be in the format. Oh, boy. Well, I sure am thankful for this Relic of Virginitas. Jeez. Get out of here. No more shenanigans. Yeah, I, remember, I think Thalia is a pretty good card for Standard formats. Good old Mayhem Devil. But I get to go. Treasure Vault. Token. Dispatch. Do this main phase so they can't uh, sack anything. Dies to Dispatch. Oh no, the needle's in my hand. But they don't know the needle's in my hand, so... They should sack the Ratchet Bomb. Yeah, I think I just passed priority back. Okay, they, they, don't, they don't fall for it. It's fine, I've got another... Uh, another uh, Saga in hand. <laughs> and now I'm glad I didn't board in the Ratchet Bomb, I guess. I also put my companion into my hand here. And now I'll name Goblin Bombardment, I guess. Although they only have one card in hand, so maybe maybe naming Ratchet Bomb was better. Love to see them pay for Echo. Okay, they don't pay. They got better things to do with their mana. <laughs> All right, glowing review for Gigantha. Put an extra counter on your opponent's two rock. <laughs> That's all it did there is put an extra counter on the two rock. I have pretty much all the expensive cards deck, but the Sentinels, are they super important? Yes, they are super important. You can play three Inspectors and be fine at, like, FNM, but since Sentinel is, like, one of the main reasons to play this deck. Sentinel is super duper strong. All right, that is Needled. Yeah, Shatterstorm would have been pretty good, huh? Okay, I, I don't know why they're attacking with a, a Goblin token and not the Turok. Or, I mean, like, I don't know why they're attacking at all, but I'm going to block... Magic slip? I mean, that's totally fine, I think. I'm probably going to pop the relic here. Maybe I'll wait one turn. I 
Anybody want to suggest portable hole on Turok? I know somebody is thinking it. I know somebody's thinking it. But there is a reason. <laughs> I was going to be not that one too. Yeah, I, I anticipated the meme. Yeah, protection from white. Oh yeah, Rumi, yeah, Rumi did make a video about that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't like this hand. Um, yeah, let's go. We have to go to five, unfortunately. Give me back that six card hand, I guess. Just didn't, just didn't do anything. All right, we're on four cards. We got a fiddle bender, I guess. I'm gonna keep. Plains, fiddle bender. <laughs> Citadel, Citadel. Uh, I, I did beat Demon of Hatred, but uh, I've only, I've only tried to fight the next and final boss. Uh, This is probably not living against Soul Scrimmage. I've only I've only tried to fight the the final boss like twice, but I'm working on it. It took me a long time to beat the Demon of Hatred, though. <sighs> There's just like so many situations where that he just kills you immediately. Like you're just running around and you bump into like the edge of the arena and you're just dead. That was. A pretty common, uh, a pretty common theme in my, in my journey to win the, the, the fight. I was like running around the arena a lot, and then I'd bump into a wall, and I was just dead. I was just dead because I, I couldn't keep running, and just one combo killed me. Could have scooped to make them think you're Tron. I mean. I don't think that that has that much equity. I was, I was talking about Sekiro. Manamorphose. How often use the Shadow Spear ability? Uh, I guess against Boggles. They fight the Owl or Lady Emma? I fought both of them, yeah. I'm on the very last boss, I think. We got three cards left. You guys remember Lava Darts in this format? Now I'm playing it off stream. You wouldn't want to watch it. It's not, I'm really bad at it. It would not be good to watch. <laughs> it would not be good to watch. It's so hard. Wait, they got to, they got to untap with Kiln Fiend and I'm not just dead? First time for everything, I guess. Killing Cauldra equipped germs was the most relevant thing. Yeah, that's right, we did that one time. I Wait, how are they playing Blister Coil Weird in 2021? Or like post MH2? Like surely Dragon Rage's channeler is like <laughs> enough better that we're we're finally moving on from Blister Coil Weird. This is a five five. So I can block the Kiln Fiend without that much fear. Can't suck the bobble though. I think I'll just get the Springleaf drum and then equip the Shadow Spear, and then I, I I think we can survive at 18 here, <laughs> would be my guess. We mold the four this game. <laughs> we mold the four and just like cast a fiddle bender against the red deck. Their top card is Bedlam Reveler, which costs them five mana, which they don't have. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, yeah, the scooping to make my opponent think I'm Tron just, just yeah, I don't think the equity was quite there. You can win on the mold of four. Yeah, the record is finally fixed, Ghost. Finally. I think my opponent is busy uh, composing an angry tweet about how Urza Saga is broken. 
and and they went and did that before they took their turn here. <laughs> what is Wizards thinking? Letting Urza Saga be legal and modern. <laughs> oh, that makes some good points, opponent. Yeah, an angry TikTok, I hope. Probably gonna cut the Cauldra and the fourth fiddle bender. I feel like the, the thorn is probably fine. Maybe it's a little slow. I'll cut the thorn. Randy Wu will be live in Toronto. What's going on? Are you just like wandering the streets, putting the microphone in people's face? <laughs> What's happening? Give me the deets. Yeah, yeah, Saga specifies it has to have a mana cost of a, a donut or a generic one. Face-to-face -face open, Toronto. Good luck to you. Yeah, good luck to everybody playing at the SCG Open this weekend. Hope you stay safe and have good travels and good vibes. Just good, 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 right? Let's see what they're drawing. I might just want to play Sentinel on turn one. They have Lava Spike on top. Oh, sorry. I thought I had a portable hole in my hand. <laughs> I, I just... I feel like I got Mandela a little bit there. The second Greaves, not looking too good here. Guess I'm gonna fiddle bender. Let's try to block the Kiln Fiend. Yeah, I, I don't think there's coverage of the SCG, right? Uh, as far as I know, there's not. But I don't know that much, so could be. Oh yeah, the Mox is also this weekend. Is Canis too cute? Uh, maybe it just like dies and then they keep casting their spell. But maybe, maybe it'll be fine. Yeah, maybe I just won't stream on Saturday. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Trample. Oh no. <laughs> All right, a little late to the chat. Portable hole. A little late. They should have coverage because they made a joke about it on Versus Live. I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> enough evidence for me. I hope that there's coverage. I mean, coverage would be really good for the... I mean, like, the, the Magic community needs a well-covered Magic tournament right now, in my opinion. Like, I think people are really, really hungry for one. Uh, but I don't think... <laughs> They made a joke about it on Versus Live. I don't, they, they, they also, I don't know why they, uh, I, I guess they wanted to draw a spell off the crash through there. Yeah, yes, they, yeah, they've said no coverage, so I don't know about the if the joke is enough to read into. Yeah, the Hunter Burton was not enough. Although I, I was, I was really happy to like actually be on like, you know, the top eight match there. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure there are I'm, there are obviously reasons why they're not doing it. I, I don't really understand it either. But uh, that's why I just sit here and play the game and uh, backseat commentate, backseat drive. Hey, Cedric, have you thought about doing coverage for the Invitational? <laughs> that's a pretty good idea, huh? What is this attack? That one's free, Cedric. You you should do coverage, I think. <laughs> Got a slot to give it six months. Appreciate you, buddy. Let's get the Shadow Spear. Equip onto the Construct, and then Portable Hole, a Soul Scar Mage, attack for six, I think. I don't think I'm chumping. Needs me to do the coverage? You don't want me on coverage. I get like really bored and uh, my head drifts off and I can't focus. <laughs> I can't I can't fake enthusiasm for that long. You know what I mean? Like you watch the stream. I'm I I get you know. <laughs> I I try to tell it like it is. And it's like on on the when we're when you're doing coverage, it's like when the games are like just so clearly over, but they're not going to actually end for ten minutes. You have to be like, oh man, oh well, this could happen for them to come back from this, you know? Oh you oh oh what's what's the top of the deck? I just can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, man, Sybil is great at faking enthusiasm. Obviously, some people are good at it. It's just not for me, I think. I just think it's not for me. Yeah, I'll just start talking about Naruto mid-match. I'll start complaining about the players playing too slowly. <laughs> you have to have anecdotes for the situations. Yeah, I know. It's so much work, you know? So much work. I'm not, I'm, this stream has not become successful on my personality or my good commentary. It's the memes and the deck building. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want me on commentary. Yeah, if you have a good partner to talk to, it's also nice, but I also don't know anybody. <laughs> Haven't you watched Professor Sports once the game is out of reach? You to talk about the city and the storylines. Hmm, the storylines. I would enjoy that, I think. I would enjoy doing like like one hour of commentary on a tournament. I think one hour of commentary is when my battery would be up and then I'd like to do anything else. But I would probably enjoy the first hour of it. Yeah, throw back to the guy. Yeah, yeah, we, I need to email that guy back. The guy that wanted to be a co-commentator on the channel. It's time. Take him off the bench. If they brought me in for just the top eight, that would probably be like the worst round to bring someone who hasn't been like following coverage in. It would be better for me to do it for like an earlier round. But I would be, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I would come across like the <laughs> worse, worse than the, uh, the promo video for the new set we saw today. It'd be worse than that. I need to. I need to stop. I need to stop playing. I keep. I keep playing fetch lands on turn one and yielding till end of turn because I've done it for so long. There's just so many main deck needles right now with Saga. I just can't afford to do that anymore. Oh, interesting. We can be dredge. But I don't know what card I'm playing here. I feel like you can make a good argument for Greaves, Stoneforge Mystic, or Smith. Um, I need to play. I need to play the Saga this turn. I need to play the Saga this turn so I can get Relic as soon as possible. So I think the best play is Greaves. Get Waffo to co stream. That would be. I would do it probably. I don't know. I mean, I've been doing the the collabs with Caleb, and they've been good, but. My battery for that fills up pretty quick. Although I am doing another collab soon. I don't know that I don't think I can really talk about it. It's nothing it's nothing like really crazy. In fact, most people are probably going to, you know, just skip it. But it's going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy it. But I don't think I can say anything about it yet. Burnt talk, I think, for the four months. Um, I guess I don't really want to attack into the thug. Maybe it's fine. Nah, we need to like maximize this relic. Yeah. Announce a win. I don't know. It's 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 like a really casual thing. It's it's not. This is not like a really hype. It's not a sponsorship. It's not a. Uh, it's not even like it's not it's, it's vaguely magic related. I could probably talk about it. But I'll just wait. Yeah, it's not it's not it's it's uh I'm joining the cast of Critical Role. <laughs> just kidding. Um I right, could probably block this one now. I switched to Yu-Gi-Oh! No, it's just gonna be like a one kind of fun off thing. And I, I'm also not, I'm not even like streaming it on this channel. It's gonna be on somebody else's channel. You watch Critical Role? I used to watch it a lot in like season two. I watched the first episode of the season. But there's just so much to keep up with. Would I get a cut of Critical Role's revenue? Well, they offered it to me, but I was like, mm, I'm really in it for the love of the game. Really just in it for the love of the game, so I'll pass. Thank you for the offer, Critical Role, Matt Mercer.
<laughs> Raid Shadow Legends hype. Yeah, it's not it's not a sponsorship. I'm getting no money from it. <laughs> just just doing it for fun. Yeah, critical obvi obviously a critical role cameo would be amazing. <laughs> Just like such a nobody though I'm also like I don't know I, I've played a lot of D&D &D and I have a lot of fun with my friends but I uh, and like not uh, a god of uh, role-playing like they are so I don't think I want the portable holes the Sentinels are probably fine the thorn is maybe okay on the play I think on the draw I'm gonna cut it and then, <sighs> Feast of Fame and making them discard is awkward. It's not that big a deal. The needle can stop. Um, Shriekhorn, it's kind of narrow too. Torporb is okay. It stops Prize Amalgam and Ox of Agonis. I guess I'll just play a couple of uh, Dispatches. Yeah, the big announcement of my Halloween costume. Uh, I'm going to try to be in costume tomorrow because I'm not sure if I'm streaming on Saturday. I, I'll i try to be in costume tomorrow, but no promises. Tune in and see if I'll be in costume. Uh, I can keep this, I guess. But it'll be, we, you know, this is turn three, Graveyard Hate. That might be a little slow on the draw. It's probably fine. Especially because this deck can just like play to the board and pretty well. What's the best main board or effect based graveyard hate in my opinion? Uh, I, th I think Relic's the best. Uh, at least in a deck that doesn't use its graveyard very much. It's like way better against Murktide. If I had access to Spellbomb. I think I think I like Relic more than Spellbomb just because like the you get to passively pressure their graveyard. Which is pretty relevant in some matchups. Otherworldly gaze. <laughs> the Akatsuki Clothis. That'd be pretty cool. They put uh Wait, how did they Oh so, so they put two fetch lands, a stinky nymph, and a prismatic ending in the yard. They dredge the imp, they hit four lands and a shriek horn, which is pretty bad RNG. Then they Cathartic Reunion, discard two Emps, Dredge an Emp, hit a Creeping Chill, Dredge an Emp, hit a Shenanigans and an Ox of Agonis. Okay, probably losing this game. And then they Dredge the Shenanigans. So, I suppose I'm Fiddle Bending? No, let's try to draw a uh, Soul Guide Lantern here. We missed. I can grab Nettle Cyst. They're probably dead. Yeah, my Halloween costume is my invitational card. Man who's afraid of everything but sharks. <laughs> Ugly yellow counterspell costume. The. Okay, I, I know I know that this wasn't like the highest effort costume I've ever done, but I did cut off the circulation a little bit, so it was at least um, painful for me, which is something that chat always enjoys. It's just a uh, coat spike perspiring. Been hitting dredge every other league. Yeah, maybe it's getting more popular. I'm gonna concede this game. Go to game three. Yeah, the, yeah I, I would talk about this a little bit. Like, the gameplay against Dredge is usually kind of boring. Uh, it's like, <laughs> did I draw my cyborg card? Nope. <laughs> okay, go to the next game. When I play you in top eight of Vegas, I want to apologize for winning. Well, I want to not accept your apology. You worked hard to get there. Apology not accepted. Alright, Mulligan. Keep this, I guess. We'll put like, the orb. 
Got a lot of looks at a sideboard card here. And then the Stoneforge Mystic might also get the job done. Why not recipes? We have artifact based graveyard hate that we can tutor for and get off Smith. Tutor for with Fiddlebender, Saga, find off Smith. She yeah, just no synergy. So they're, I guess they're holding up otherworldly gaze here. Let me sack this chromatic star. <laughs> yeah, still expensive Lockhart. I'll let you know if it changes. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I shouldn't... Yeah, they, they could respond to the... I should have played the Saga first, so if they have, like... I guess, what can they have for one mana? They would have to, like, smelt. Yeah. But I should have played this first so I could sack the Lantern to draw a card if they killed it. Pluto, thank you for the three months. Appreciate ya. <laughs> White Frexian, Instant Exile, all cards in exile. Um... <laughs> I have no thoughts. No notes. So they're not casting their otherworldly gaze. So the your guard hoses your and it doesn't do anything. Those cards are already in exile. What? They're new they're new job objects, but they're already in the exile zone. You exile all cards in exile doesn't do anything. They're already in the exile zone. Right? All right, let's just make a token this turn. If a card was, if a card would be exiled, exile it instead. Yeah, exactly. I will find the rule. Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to phrase it differently. The way you've suggested, I don't think it does anything. I think I hear Athena ask it to come in. I'm wrong. Athena. She's, she's not out there. Wishful thinking. So they can ox, but they lose like rest of their graveyard. I feel I really feel like with the saga coming down, they should have oxed there, but we're gonna just take it. And then make another token, get a relic, I think. I think I just pop it now so to exile the shenanigans. <laughs> kind of a redundant hand, huh? Three fiddle benders. It's like so windy. It's, it was so windy outside, Esther was opening the, the door and it changed the air pressure in here. <laughs> it's really weird for a second. Um, I think I should try to find the land off of Genius Smith. Awesome. And then, I don't think I want to give them the imp in the graveyard. Not when I can fiddle bend. Although I've already lost my lantern and my relic. So we'll have to see. Exile the card, unless it's already in exile. If this occurs and a card is not exiled, exile another random card. Already in exile, draw a card, yep. Uh, <laughs> I guess you could, you could, this card could be put all cards in exile into the command zone. <laughs> that would work. It would definitely work. So I can get Graft Digger's Cage. Prismatic Ending the Fiddle, okay. They have a Scalding Turn on top. Get yeah, Anti all the cards in Exile. Has anybody ever played for Anti? before i mean okay i know that anybody in the chat has anybody in the chat ever played for anti before 
Because I can't really imagine it's uh, <laughs> that good of a time. Long time ago, yeah. How, how was it? What were your experiences? Okay, so we put it to two here. It's probably fine. Or we could just wait a turn and just kill them. Put it to two. It sucked. Yeah, I, I can imagine it's just like... Yeah, for those of you who don't know what Anti is, and the first Magic sets, uh, there were cards that had the Anti mechanic, which would uh, usually like put the top... You would like, exile the top cards of the library, and then the winner of the match would get to keep all the cards. <laughs> you would get to keep all the cards Antied. Wasn't great, yeah. And the most, the most ma powerful Magic card in magic is is an anti card and it, and you know anti's kind of been yeeted from existence right uh it's been kind of banned and scrubbed clean but the most powerful magic card is an anti card that card is contract from below which is uh, it's like a it's a one mana both uh draw eight you know it's like time twister but one mana but you draw eight instead it's really weird i think or, or maybe it's draw seven and you anti the eighth card but it's 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 the best card in uh in magic. I keep this, so yeah, the believers were probably not feeling too good when we started this league off 0-1, but we're battled back, currently three and one. Playing for a trophy. Peatland in the hierarch. Could be Yogmoth, could be Jun Sack. I'm not a big fan of Peatland in in Jun and uh sorry, in Yogmoth, but doesn't mean they're not playing it. Kind of looks like they are. And we have a Graph Digger's Cage uh, in the deck, which is the best card against Jogmoth usually. Uh, do I want a Fiddlebender here? Probably do. I'll try to get a Needle for Jogmoth or Grist. Probably Jogmoth. Crazy Hair, I think the, the, uh, the Gifted sub is really nice of you. Play vintage with con no contract from blow is banned in vintage. It's not it's not legal in any format. Okay, so they're gonna minus uh kill the kill the fiddle. It's pretty good. We do get to we do get to um needle uh, off of the saga. Can also go two drop into two drop. That's probably better than making a token here. Uh, Stoneforge into Fiddlebender. I don't want to play Smith. I think I'm gonna go Stoneforge Fiddlebender here. Get Cauldra. Yeah, legal and anti games. Uh, are we playing for anti opponent? I just want to know if we're if if you want to play for anti. Zach, thank you for the eleven months. Appreciate you, buddy. How's the deck been performing? Uh, I think today we're three two into. Wait, they didn't get Yogmoth? They must think that we win when we untap with, with fiddle. Uh, yeah, we were three two and O two drop into four one. Now we're three one, and then on Monday we were eleven and four. So overall, it's been it's been very good, for sure. Okay, so do have two cards left. Make a token. I'm gonna I'm gonna pithing needle Yogmoth here. I know that they have the Grist in play, but. It's really the Yogmoth that's way scarier. I can also equip the Shadow Spear onto... Yeah, I'll just equip the Shadow Spear onto the Fiddlebender and just kill the Grist. That's one Fiddly Bender right there. Reducing the number, the value his ante enough to where Clegg can no longer mention it. What does that mean? The value of his ante. Nice Yogmoth. Yeah, 
Let me just move the Shadow Spear over to the Construct here. Oh, whoops. Have a big germ token to block. Whoever had the most valuable pool at the end won. Really? You want to match not by games, but by cash value of the cards won by ante. That is horrible. <laughs> Man, you complain about formats right now. <laughs> Can you complain about formats today? He used to he used to win a match by anteing the most valuable cards. What the hell? <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> that is uh, hilarious. It was a part of the invitational. Was fun. I mean, I guess I just like I think of invitationals as being huge, high stake events. You know what I mean? But if people, if they're having fun, if everybody pinky promises they're having fun, that's fine. Invitational is not high stakes. Yeah, what was the invitational like then? Let me keep this. Is Orb worth it? Uh, I don't think so. They don't have like that many. They, it's like Sub's Messenger and Rexage. And it's, oh, they skipped their first turn. Weird. Stops uh, Messenger and Rexage, and it, it stops like three, uh, our Stoneforge Mystics and Smiths. Yeah, I'm putting it has a confirmed Maiden Oopsie. I'm gonna wait a turn on the Saga here. Called you them. Lazy Titan, one month, appreciate you. Like the NBA say All-Star game? Okay, I like that game. For sure. Or, sorry, I was thinking of the, the arcade NBA All-Star. <laughs> the arcade game. I guess we're still waiting a turn. So we can do this. But that game was awesome. But I see. I, see. I, I, I understand now, like, the actual NBA All-Star game. Lazy Titan, thank you for the two months. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand now. Okay, well, sorry, sorry, uh, doubters. 0-1 into 4-1 to pay off the Believers feels pretty good, though. That matchup's, that matchup's pretty strong. Wow, that was an exact 50-50, uh, split two. So we went 3-2, 0-2, 4-1-4-1. What does that make? Oh, Ulamog is pretty nice. What does that make the overall record of the stack? Let's see, that's 8... So, 20, 22, and 10? 22 and 10? That's pretty good. Easy points. 